I have chosen to make this video to help the folks out there who are into DTF or looking to get into DTF. Um, and they have the Epson L1800 printer. Now, this could apply to other printers, but I know for me, this has worked with my L1800 printer, all right? And I have decided to let the printer clog, unfortunately, but I wanted to do this video because the method that I have found um, and have used to unclog the printer worked so well that I thought, why not show it? And I can't show it if the printer's not clogged. I mean, technically I could, but that's not exactly how that cookie crumbled. So I decided to go ahead and let it clog so that I can show this. Let me start all of this video, preface the video by stating that this method or any method where you are taking apart your printer can or will void your warranty if you have a warranty. Let's say that too. You may not have a warranty if you bought it from a secondhand person. But if you do have a warranty, this will void it. If you don't have a warranty, keep in mind too that this could trash your print head. Okay? This could damage, permanently damage your print head where your printer will not print anymore. So please keep that in mind as well. You have to be extremely careful when you're working with the internal components of these printers and electronics and the circuit boards and all of that jazz could very easily be destroyed using this method. Why am I showing it then? Because it worked. <laughs> it worked for me. Um, as a matter of fact, I've used this method um, about two to three times, three times now already in unclogging my printer. I have a bad habit of letting it sit and not uh, printing anything. Now, how do you know when your printer needs to be unclogged? Well, I have a couple of examples here. So here is a printout and what we normally do is a purge. Now this is old, so that's why there are some pieces missing and I never cured this. So because I never cured it, uh, it's beat up looking, so I apologize for that. But this is the printed side, and this is what it looks like once it's printed. Now, as you see, a DTF printer prints white. So the DTF has white ink. Uh, but in this instance, the white ink isn't very strong. It's not very strong. So what will happen is when you press this onto a black surface, or a dark colored shirt, you will be able to see the color behind the white because it's just, just not super strong. Let me show you what it looks like when the ink is what it's supposed to be. Look at the difference in the white color. See how you can still see some of the color behind this, but it's nowhere near as bad as if it's like that. <laughs> you can see much better but here you can see the difference in the white the quality of the white actually this is upside down you can see the difference this white is much stronger this is what we're looking for uh, when we're printing with the dts so that lets me know also what would let me know is um this is what it's doing right now at this exact moment i printed this a couple of hours ago um, and you see there's smears there. So that lets me know my print head is dirty first. Then my white is barely existing, as you see here. And this is what it's supposed to look like. Um, and it doesn't. So this all lets me know that even though that has a smear, but that's because I smeared it myself, not with the print head. But this lets me know that it needs to be cleaned. All right. So what we're going to do today is we're going to take the print head out of the printer. I'm going to show you all of that, uh, all of those steps for the most part, and then we'll bring it over and I'll show you the techniques I use to unclog my print head. All right. And again, this is my method. This is what I use. And you have to be extremely careful using this method. Anytime you're introducing liquid, to your print head, you have to be very careful, 
All right, we're not only using liquids, but we're also using pressure. So you definitely want to be careful either one of these methods. So hang in with me. Uh, let's go ahead and switch over and we'll get the uh, print head taken out of the printer so that we can show you step by step what I do to unclog my print head. If you have a printer that's not printing properly and you need to clean your printer, here are the tools that I recommend or here are the tools that I use from left to right, depending upon how severe your clog is. If it's just a light clog, not much wrong, then you have your Q-tips and your sponges that can help you uh, do your basic cleaning of your print head. Then I have this container, although there are uh, syringes in it, the syringes I use to help draw some of the ink from the cartridges. And because each syringe has been used with a color, I just like to keep them all in one container. Um, and then that way I don't mix up the syringes with the different colors. But I also use this container or the lid actually to help me clean the print head itself. So I use this. And then here is a syringe with a rubber tube on it. And this rubber tube helps fit onto the print head nozzle. Now, if you want to know where to get uh, tubing of this size, um, you can check in the description. I'll see if I can't find this tubing in the description, but you can go to your local hardware store and ask them for the tubing that is used for gas lines and like lawnmowers or whatnot. Um, and they'll know exactly what you're talking about because that's where I got mine. Um, you'll need a Phillips head screwdriver, which I got this one from Dollar Tree in a pack of two with a flat head and a Phillips head. And of course, the Phillips head is the one that has the grooves in it. And this is the smallest, small, one of the smallest size Phillips head prior to getting to the micro sizes. I use a magnetic pickup tool for if I drop the screw down into the printer. And then you'll need some form of a pick tool to help uh, get the uh, spring clip taken off to get the print head out. And ultimately, this baby right here has been phenomenal um, in helping me get my clogs completely clear. So this is an ultrasonic cleaner, and I got it from off of Amazon, and the link to this is in the description as well. This was amazing, okay? So let's get to it. So here we have our L1800. And one of the first things I want to do is point out that the power right now is on. We don't want the power on, okay? Also, the um, I cut out this extra area here from my own machine with the Dremel so that I could have full access to all of the cartridges without having to have the carriage move. But in this instance, because we're removing the print head, you do want to get the carriage um, out of the way, all right, so that we can have full access to uh, the side of the carriage so that we can make sure we can get the print head unplugged, okay? So in order to do that, we need to uh, have this carriage move. And the way I normally do it is I'll go ahead and cut the printer off. I know there's... Um, I saw one video where a guy was like, there's a switch somewhere that you can push uh, or something on the side, but I don't know how to do that. So I'm going to do it the hard way. Turn it off, then turn it back on. And once the carriage moves, then I'll unplug it. So cut the power to the printer. So now that it's moved over, I almost missed it, but <laughs> now that it's moved over, we can unplug it and now we have full access and it slides it's not locked in place and that's what we want so the first step in getting to our print head is we need to remove these cartridges all right and there's normally a white bracket that's screwed in right here i have removed mine and left it off but i have the rest of this on there so you just pull this tab to 
uh, take this plastic off and then you grab your cartridges and you pull them out of place. Now there's little tabs back behind each cartridge right there that you'll want to press to get the release done with these cartridges. And you pull them out uh, one by one, or I actually sometimes will pull them out uh, all at one time. But I have some air in there I need to get out of there. And see how that white ink has separated. So while doing this, I want to um, mention why there's such an issue with the white ink. Okay, so I called and spoke with a um, printer company that does DTG, which DTG, direct to garment, and DTF are essentially the same. Uh, printing uh, ink, but the process of getting the ink to the garment is different. At any rate, the white ink that is used in this method is made with titanium, I believe she said, he said. Um, and because titanium is heavy, it sinks. So that's why it's difficult to uh, Keep it from clogging and another thing I normally would do which I'm not doing right now is wear gloves because if you don't want ink all over your hands then you can get a pair of disposable gloves um, and wear them to protect your hands but right now I don't have any and so at this point when I take out the cartridges a lot of times I'll look at the uh, exit for the inks and see if it's any clog or any extra goop on there and uh, make note of it so that I can get that cleaned off uh, when I am come back to this part of the process. So I have all of the um, cords out of the track and I just pretty much hang it right here. You, you want to be careful with that too because each of these are just connected to that with pressure. So it could, you know, come apart. But for the most part, I'm pretty careful with mine. So... Just be careful with yours. And here, down in this section, one, two, three, four, five, six, those are the nozzles that suck the ink from your cartridges and deliver it to the print head. That's what this is. Whoop, my rubber band came off. But this is our print head down here, and we want to take this out. All right, and it's held in with two Phillips head screws. Sorry, three. Three Phillips head screws. One, two, three. But this is in the way, holding it in place. And there's a bracket here that we need to remove. So what I generally um, use for mine, uh, some people use tweezers, but I have this little pick tool here that I'm going to use, all right? And when, I'm, when, I, can, when I get this out, I'll show you the spring clips that we're pushing in to remove this. So there's a spring clip on this side and a spring clip on this side. Basically a pressure type spring clip. And so if you get it right, which you gotta kind of have to hold your mouth right sometimes to get it in there. But if you get it right, you'll fill it and it'll see how that popped up a little bit. You'll get it to pop out. So now we just got to get this one, which this one is always harder for me. All right, maybe it's too much pressure on the other side. There we go. It's too much pressure from over here. There we go. All right. So we pop both sides. As you see, here's the little plastic spring clip that's holding this in place. So you have to get this tool back behind that and press it in to release it to get it to pull straight up. So here's one part. Um, and this is what holds your cartridges in each slot. 
we'll take that off. And now we have better access to the three screws that are holding our print head in place. But there's also a cable right here that's running down and connected to the print head. So we need to get this off as well. And this is also held in by uh, a type of pressure as well with these two clips um, that stays attached to the bracket. And these are just as annoying to get off. So you kind of got to get these off right here. Let me see if I can do it better with my finger because you just lift up on it basically. So this is better just to do with my fingernail to lift up. And there we got it. So you're basically lifting this out and lifting that out. So that was easier to do with my fingernail. But this also is the plate, as you see, that protects the cable that goes down to the print head. This has to be removed as well. So we'll set that off to the side and we'll set our pick tool to the side. And now what I highly suggest <laughs> that you want to keep on hand um, when you're working with taking these screws out. Here's your Phillips head screwdriver, okay? And it's the small Phillips, the small size Phillips. But this is a magnetic tool. If your uh, screwdriver is not a magnetic tip, please keep this because I promise I didn't drop the screw down in here. And if I didn't have that, I would have been in a sad, sad position. So, but I have since gotten this magnetized and this screwdriver set came from Dollar Tree. This and a flathead that came with it. So here's one screw and we want to set it somewhere safe. Let's get this second screw. All right, and set this somewhere safe. And here's the third screw. And we want to set this somewhere safe. All right, and here's our screwdriver. So I'm going to set this right beside the printer. And now we can lift out our print head. And here is our print head, you guys. This is what's causing all of the problems with the claws. As you see, that white is caked up around there but that's to be expected because the this nozzle actually fits up into the cartridge so here is the cables here are the cables rather and here is our print head and as you see look at all this gunk this ink gunked up on here um, but for the time being and i'll show you the issue that causes but let me pull these cables out first so just a gentle tug pulls that cable free and another gentle tug pulls this cable. It's pressure. So you just pull it right out. And there we have our print head completely free um, for us to work with. Now, this being gunked up is what causes these dark smears here. Okay, wrong side, wrong print side. This side. So when you start to see that smearing there, that's what this is this is causing that problem because it's all gunked up and we don't want that um on our printout so let's switch back over uh to the cardboard and get this thing cleaned up earlier when i was going over the things that you need to have um i forgot to mention paper towels definitely have those on hand because this is going to make a mess so again, here is our dirty print head. Um, and as you see a little bit closer, it has gunk all around it. And what we'll do is show an image of a clean print head with this one so that you'll know what we're trying to achieve um, in getting our print head clean. Now, as I'm doing this, please, please, please keep in mind, there's a computer chip right here. And as you see, there's not much space between this plate here and the computer chip that's on this print head. You do not want to get this wet. You really do not want to get this wet at all because this will definitely ruin this print head completely. Um, and then it won't work anymore. As you well know, we don't get electronics wet just like you don't want to drop your cell phone in water. 
And then, as I mentioned, here are the actual nipples that go up into the print cartridges that draw the ink down into them. And they shoot them out of, there's three rows of nozzles that you can barely see um, on here, but I'll show you the nozzles uh, whenever we start actually getting the chemical flush through. But there's rows of nozzles. There's two rows here, two rows here, and two rows of nozzles. There are six rows of nozzles. And as you see, one, two, three, four, five, six jets that push the ink out of these nozzles. And that's what uh, gets you your ink put out onto your project. Okay. So one of the first things we want to do is grab our cleaning solution. And just to show you uh, starting out how gunky this actually is, I'm going to dip this into the cleaning solution. And the cleaning solution, I have a link in the description below for this as well, um, that you can get from a direct-to-film supplier. And then I'll also tell you another cleaning solution that I use. But you put it on the swab, and then you can basically just wipe along and you see it's coming right off it doesn't take much a light touch and just barely touching it can rub this dried ink off of it off of the edges because when it builds up on these edges as you notice hopefully you can kind of sort of see that the plate that the ink nozzles are in is just slightly recessed from this outer edge so this is what actually is going to touch the paper or your film, whereas this recessed part usually doesn't unless the ink just gets really gunked up in there. So you want to wipe this off very carefully. You don't want to put a whole ton of pressure on there. And we want to clean this off. Okay. So as you see, it becomes really nice and pretty and shiny once we get that extra gunk off of there. Now this, what we're doing now, we're cleaning for the smears and the smudges. Where I was showing you, it smeared the ink um, on the film, right? So this one is, in my opinion, used up. So I'm gonna get another one, dip it in the solution, and then we'll clean the sides as well, okay? And the reason, again, to clean the sides is for the smudges. And I also uh, want to get any dried up ink off of the sides. Because the dried up ink is similar to uh, almost like vinyl. Because this pretty much, once your, your DTF is printed onto the film and it's cured, it basically ends up being vinyl, technically. So... That's what we're dealing with here. And as you see now, with all of that gunky up ink gone, you have a nice mirror finish and a really clean print head. However, it's still clogged. <laughs> it is still clogged. So what I'm going to do, to do now is try to get this clog out of there. And one of the ways I do, now I know for a fact because I did a nozzle check, my blue, my red, or magenta, my black, and my yellow is not clogged. So I don't want to uh, force any ink or, or cleaning solution through those four nozzles, those four channels, because they're fine. I don't want to risk blowing uh, those channels because this, well, I'm going to do is draw some of the cleaning solution up. And actually, I need to put some cleaning solution down in the bottom of this because you don't want to let your print head just be willy nilly dry like that. Um, you definitely want to keep that wet as much as possible. And as you see, it's pulling some ink from the bottom of it uh, with it sitting there. But what I'm essentially going to do is draw the cleaning solution into the syringe. And just like the printer cartridge inserts over the nipple of each channel, we're going to put the cleaning solution and use the plunger to ever so slightly 
press and push the cleaning chemical into the print head. And what essentially that'll do is just like if this was ink going into it, it's going to push out of the nozzles on the underside. Okay, that's the goal. Now, you really have to be very, very careful doing this because it's too much pressure from this. There are rubber gaskets that line the entire uh, inside of this thing for each channel. And there's a rubber gasket sealing each channel. So if you put too much pressure, just like if you're blowing up a tire, you put too much pressure in that tire, it's going to blow the tire. Well, likewise, this gasket will blow if you put too much pressure and force that that chemical out faster than the gasket can handle, okay? So here you see it's drawing the ink out of the, the different channels. And as I mentioned, those channels aren't clogged. So we're not going to worry about those channels too much. Um, but we are going to go ahead and try to get some ink through these two white channels that are um, clogged up. So I'm going to take the cleaning solution, the printer cleaning solution, and I'm going to put it over the nipple, as you see here. And then we're going to try and squirt it out and see if it comes out of this channel. Okay, let's put something a little bit darker behind this. To see if it makes it easier for you to see the stream coming out. So I'm going to ever so slowly press on the plunger up here to get the chemical to come through. Now it's still, the nipple is still on the, on the thing. So what I want to do, you see how that's coming out and it's not, you know, it's kind of like, can you see the stream you see that stream against that gray? Can you see it? How it's squirting out? That's what your ink looks like. So that's coming out pretty good, actually. Now that I'm sitting here looking at it, that's not bad at all. That's a good steady stream. And if you hold it up against something dark, what you'll notice is the stream comes out in a, a line of of ink and cleaning chemical. So if you are, you know, really observant and can really see that stream of ink coming out, what you'll notice is whether the whole line is there or if there's a couple of channels that are missing because the whole stream, like a waterfall, a whole stream, there'll be some chunks missing out of that stream. <laughs> so it's pretty cool um, if you can really look at it and pay attention to what's going on um, with that. Now that was this channel. So let's try um, the next channel. That was this one. So let's try this one and we'll see if we can get a good stream out of this one. And yeah, it's actually coming out. Oh, I see a couple of streams that are clogged because it's not completely, it's not a full, or is it? Let me look again. Now, nope, I still see there's a couple of couple of places right on this end where it looked like it wasn't coming out completely, okay? So now that I've determined that and I've seen what I need to see, I want to get the rest of those channels unclogged, okay, out of that white. And so what I'm going to have to do now is or I'm going to use the ultrasonic cleaner. And the ultrasonic cleaner will help me get the rest of everything unclogged, okay? So let me get you set up so that you can see how that works. Now, as you see, whenever you're you're pushing um, the ink through, there's gonna be some kickback. So there's ink up here that I don't want. Uh, so again, use a drier uh, Q-tip and I can go through and clean some of this up and absorb some of that white ink. All right. Or any of the other color, whatever color it is that is um, 
coming out of here. At the same time, I'm keeping an eye on my chip area and making sure that that chip area is good and dry, that I'm not letting any liquid get to that computer chip under there. So I'm really careful how I apply liquid to this. I don't want to get liquid. See, like, notice here how there's some white ink over here on the side. We don't want ink coming down into that chip. So you got to be really, really, really super duper careful um, as you're putting uh, your liquid cleaner up here. Now, usually when you squirt it in up here, it doesn't roll down there, but you still want to be kind of careful. All right, now I'm just mopping this up some. I'm not going to mop it up completely because once I put it in here, it's pretty neat how this works. All right, so here is, let me slide this over a little bit so that I can show you in detail. Here is an ultrasonic cleaner. Now, what this is normally used for is jewelry. All right, and it works wonders for jewelry. <laughs> it's really cool. So you have an on button, off button, and set for timer. Right now, it's at 180. When you press the set button, it goes to 280, 380, 480, 90 seconds and then back to 180, all right? Now, depending on the severity of the clog, I usually do, like right now, I can see stream coming out when I press when I press the chemical through, the cleaning solution through. So I'm only gonna do 180, 180 seconds. But one time it was clogged so bad, I couldn't even get a stream out of it. So I put it on 380, I'm sorry, 280. So I let it go longer, the next cycle up. I haven't had the claw so bad where I had to run it 380 or 480, okay? So ordinarily, what you do is you put liquid water, uh, according to the directions on Amazon. This is a removable basket. And as you see, there's a line here inside that says match. All right, so if you're trying to clean your jewelry, for instance, you would put enough chemical in here where it would, you know, go up to cover your jewelry. You want to make sure that your jewelry is covered in the liquid. And then you put it in there and you press it for the seconds and you let it clean your jewelry ultrasonically. Even if you don't buy this for this or if you buy this for that, you also can use it as a bonus for your jewelry. Yay! So at any rate, this is what I'm going to use. Now, the thing is, I cannot put enough chemical in here to keep, well, I have to put, I can only put enough cleaning solution in here to just barely cover the bottom of this, okay? Because you don't want it, want your level higher than that, which could risk getting to this area. Sorry, you can't see any of that. So, I need to make sure that the chemical I put in here is only going to come to about this area here. You don't want it higher than that because it could risk getting into these electrical components here. And that's definitely what you don't want because it's ultrasonic. It's going to be some vibration and possibly some splashes. So you want it as minimal as possible in the bottom of this thing uh, without going too deep. Okay, so. That being the case, we're going to go ahead and put our chemical in here. I'll move this to where it's not. There's something up under here. Okay. We need this to sit straight. And it'll move it a little bit closer. And I'm going to pour this cleaning solution in there. And as you see, I'm going to leave the basket in. And pretty much what I want to do is just get it where it's at the top of this circle. Now, that's in this particular cleaning tub. I don't know um, what others are like because this is the only one I've ever purchased. Well, actually, my daughter purchased this for her jewelry. And it works great for this, uh, which was pretty cool. So now I'm going to take the print head and just set it in there. And I'm looking before I set it to make sure that it's covering the bottom plate and it's not 
anywhere near getting to these electrical components. And you can see the liquid on the edge, how deep this is for this thing, all right? So now, when you're doing your jewelry, they say close the lid and press go, but I'm just going to press go. And you hear the vibration start. Now, what you'll notice is over time, as this is working, you'll see the cleaning, look, is bubbling up out of the tube up here. See it coming out? That's really cool because it's working from the bottom up to help get all of these claws and stuff up out of this thing. So while it's doing that, what I want to do is make sure that this ink doesn't run down into the um, computer chip area. So I'm constantly dabbing and absorbing this, this ink liquid to help make sure that this doesn't go any further and i'm actually going to use a bigger paper towel to get some more absorbency because i know the computer chip is on this side so i definitely want to get all of this up out of there sorry i know my hands in the way but i'm trying to make sure i don't cause myself any problems any more than what i may already have but the cool thing is you can see it working. You can see the ink coming back up the channel, which is really cool. Um, and it lets you know, hey, this is working to try and bust up some of these clogs that are going on uh, within the print head. Okay. So it's really neat to see it work. And I'm down to 76 seconds, 75, 76 seconds on the uh, timer on this thing. So I could guess I could just let this sit in here. It's pushing out the ink, so it shouldn't be too much more ink in there. But But once we do this, what I'll do is take it out and do the same thing with the syringe, flush more solution down those two channels that were giving me a fit. And then we'll see whether or not we can see a full stream, a full waterfall out of that, uh, those two white channels or if we're still missing some slots. If we're still missing some slots, then I run it again. But I think this one time will do it because it wasn't super clogged. Three, two, one. All right, so that's it. We're done. And again, I know the chip is over here, so I want to take it out and not tilt it anywhere where it will get to you know, my chip. And I'll also double check and look and make sure I don't see any, um, make sure I don't see any liquid near my computer part area that'll have me panicking. All right. So now that we're done here, I'm going to slide this back over. Here's the, the gunky liquid. It's not bad. It's just a mixture of the different inks that were being pulled, actually pushed and pulled, um, out of that chamber and i'm gonna come back over here set it back down and resituate my paper towels and such and pull you back over to here all right so let's get these out of the way because they're dirty and i'm gonna grab a couple of clean ones from behind me and now what I'm going to do is move this out of the way, bring this paper towel over, and we'll do the waterfall again, and hopefully you'll be able to see it as it comes on the paper towel, okay? So actually, let's drop you down a little bit. Back down to where... Hopefully you can see the waterfall better. All right. I'm going to 
add a little bit more solution to this so that I don't run out while testing. Okay. So now let us, okay. This is one white channel. All right, one of the white channels right here. Press lightly. See how you can see it coming down on the paper towel in a row. And in looking at it on the paper towel, it looks like all of the channels are there, but I couldn't really see. I really need to look at it from this direction. So I'm going to grab another paper towel and fold it. We're starting to see good ink coming out. So go to this one, press. Man, that looks good. That's a full channel there. I can see that from up here. All right, I'm gonna go back to the other one and double check, make sure of what I saw. Oh, ran out of cleaning chemical, the very thing I didn't want to do. Cleaning solution, rather. And again, I'm pressing really gently to do this. It still looks like uh, one little area could be clogged, but I think I'm going to take a chance and say that that's enough for right now. So, our surface of our print head is clean. So, this has been cleaned off. I don't have the black gunky anymore. I didn't flush with cleaning solution the other four colors because, like I said, those weren't clogged. So I didn't want to mess with those as far as trying to put pressure and pressure uh, waterfall those four. Uh, so we're good for right now. I'm just going to leave this like it is. And we're going to reinstall this like it is and try and get us back up and running with our white ink. Okay. So I showed you what the white ink printout was looking like earlier. So let us put this back on in the exact reverse of how we took it out and uh, see about getting our print head back up and running. Okay. So we could plug this up and it could not print at all because if you get any liquid in there, like I might have gotten liquid in there and can't see it. But we could plug this in and, and not get anything if I blew any of the gasket that's in there. So that kind of is like a hold your breath and see type moment. So let's go ahead and get this put back in. So now we're going to put our print head back in the exact same way we took it out. So one of the first things we need to do is put our cables back into the side. All right, and I put in the um, large one first. So we just slide it in to that channel there and just even pressure. You should feel it clip right in place, okay? You don't want to bend these cables, okay? So be very careful with these cables. You don't want to bend them or break them, and they're easy to break. And I kind of like eyeball it from the back side to see if it looks even, not crooked, meaning that it might not be seated in there correctly. So you wanna, you know, just make sure that that's seated. And then we're gonna slide this one in as well. And again, you'll feel it click in place. So that's done. All right, we got our, we got our cable in. All right, and so now that that's the case, we're going to just set this back down into its place. Okay. So when that's in place, you'll see your cables kind of go where they're supposed to be. And I just got them, you know, move them right back behind this clip area, which is where it was to make sure that that's seated down properly. Like it shouldn't be rocking. Or anything. So now we know that's in there. So let's grab our screws. 
that we set off to the side in a safe place. We'll go ahead and screw this back in. All right, you don't have to crank it in. You just hand, just barely hand tighten is good. Here's our next screw. Put that in. All right, and here's our next screw. Put that in. All right, now our print head has been installed. So now remember, here's our clip that are gonna be on this side. So we wanna set that and slide it down over the top. The majority of this goes on this side and then these indentations here hang over this side. And you wanna make sure that that's all the way over and then you clip it in place. All right, so you hear it click. You don't have to force it. And you remember these are our pressure clips that we were trying to get at the top. So this goes in that way. And you just slide this in place and, and this goes right in and clicks in place. And that's it. We're done with the print head. Everything else there is where it's supposed to be. So now what I generally do is I come back, grab my cartridges, um, and really quick. There really shouldn't be much air in these cartridges, okay? Now, I do have some air in there. And this is the part where I was mentioning having the syringes dedicated to each color, like so. All right, so if I wanted to get that extra air out of this yellow, I'll grab my yellow syringe, or the one with the yellow ink residue in the tip, and then this you also really want to be careful with you can press down because this is the nozzle is pressure sensitive you see it moving in there and then you can draw ink out and see it pull that air out of there and you can get the air out of the cartridge um but you really want to be careful because one time i put that in there and was rough with it moving it around trying to get the air out and the little rubber gasket came out of one of the cartridges. Once you draw this ink out, just open the lid over here on the reservoir and squirt it back into the reservoir. All right, so you're not wasting ink. All right, so let's slide that in place. That's yellow. After yellow comes black on my printer. After yellow comes black. Slide that in place. Here's white. I want to check and make sure that it's not uh, separated and it's not. We've been shaking it up pretty good. So I'm gonna put that in there, that's that channel white. And now let's bring over our next white, which is right here. We'll just slide that in place. Oh, I didn't check it. There's a lot of air in that one. Take it up anyways. I'm gonna pull some of that, see if I can get some of that air out. And this also has a plastic coating or the bladder basically. This plastic, please be careful with that. You don't wanna puncture that at all. Pull some of that, there we go. Pull some of that ink out of there, out of air, rather. All right, now set that to the side because I'm going to push that into the tank reservoir. So for the time being, let's slide that into place. Next comes red, or magenta, rather. We'll put that in place. And now, finally, our cyan, or blue. And put that in place. All right. So now that that's in place, we want to look at how, um, slide it all the way over and look at how it is laid and push our tubes back into their channel. This is super important because you don't want your tubes to get jammed up in the machine as it's printing. That will cause a printer error and uh, cause you some problems. So we want to get this 
wedged in there like they're supposed to be in each respective channel. Pull this back out, slide this back over. And you want to make sure that your um, tubes are all up against the front of the machine because God knows that'll get caught too. And then to put this back on, we want to slide it into the open end and then push it back. Okay, so there's a larger section here. Check and make sure that these tabs come up through the plastic. And then when you get the top one in, I like to give it a little tug from back here to pull and make sure that these slots slide into their place in that ribbon. See how now it slid and locked it in place to keep that from coming up. Okay, so that's done. Those are installed and that's it. So now what I want to do is I'm going to close the lid and I'm going to plug it back in behind the back. And now that it's plugged in, I'm going to turn it on. And I'm going to lift this back up just so that you can see it moving and resetting itself. Because of what it's going to do now, the printer knows that the power was interrupted to it. So because the printer knows that the power was interrupted, it's going to go through its own reset recalibrating cycle so it's going to reset the cradle printer cradle is going to check all of that stuff and that's where you also listen to make sure that it's not catching on anything make sure your hands are out of the way when that sucker comes back because it does hurt <laughs> and then uh you'll hear it go through kind of like a cleaning it almost sounds like you hear that see so something wasn't attached right here because the printer came snatched off. All right, that's not a good thing, but you got to be be aware of that and make sure that that cable is seated because it will make all kinds of racket and sound horrible, uh, but it's just the plastic that's catching on the side of this thing. All right, so everything's back in place. Let's do a test printout and see what we come up with. So the reason why I'm telling it to do a print head clean cycle is because I squirted cleaning chemical in here and that will pull that chemical out of these two sections. So we'll give that a minute to do its cleaning. Now that it's done doing the cleaning, we're going to print a purge page and see how it turns out. There's our color. Let's see if we get whites over the top. And there's our whites. And as you see, it's building up to a really nice, thick, white color. Really looks good. That method does work for cleaning out claws. And... To show you, this is what I just pulled off of the printer. Now, there's still some banding here uh, with ink that apparently there's some ink buildup somewhere. Not sure where, but I'll have to check that in a little bit. But as you see, the white is there. And when we go on the back, there's some banding there in the white ink. I don't know how well you can see that. But... It probably could span that I would need to do another head cleaning or uh, something along those lines. But when you're dealing with barely any white,
to now white being there is a market marketed difference. I mean, the, the difference is apparent. So that's the method that I use. Like I said, I probably need to do another head cleaning to try to figure out what it is that's gunking up on the head of it um, to make that smearing come. But not anything as major as no white coming out, which is pretty much close to what I was having here on the printer uh, before. So that's my method. And as you see, it has worked. Uh, there are major risks involved with doing it the way that I did it. Um, however, it did work. So if you're interested in finding out any of the materials that I used, I will have the links in the description below. Please check those. Uh, my cleaning solution, my uh, little fuzzy tips, uh, even the syringe can come from Kingdom DTF, which is where I purchased my printer from. Um, and if you're interested in purchasing a DTF printer, despite the challenges of ink clogging, it, even if you go DTF, DTG, you'll have that issue with the white ink. If you are okay with keeping your printing going on a regular basis, I had stopped printing. Matter of fact, the last time I printed was very near a week ago. So I'm actually doing good for it to only have been clogged barely instead of being completely solid clogged um, like I had one time before. But you want to print regularly with this thing. If you can do that, I mean, and if you're doing shirts and stuff, you'll have the orders to get your printing up and going. So, and gosh knows, even if you don't have shirts and stuff to print for yourself, you can easily offer transfers to sell and make money that way as well. Um, and that'll keep your printer up and running. I guarantee you that. Just have to make sure every morning before you start printing, you shake up your reservoir, you shake up your cartridges, um, you know, check your printout, do a print nozzle check, make sure it's your inks are all firing like they're supposed to and then start printing for the day and as long as you're printing daily you should be all right without having um, any claws and follow that recipe every morning before you get started so hopefully you enjoy the video for those of you who are at wit end like i was with the claws hopefully this will help you uh if you're super careful please again please make sure you are very careful when you're doing the waterfall where you're pressing the plunger, don't shove the ink or the stuff, don't force it through. As a matter of fact, if you press that plunger and it gives you any resistance whatsoever, um, then stop. Don't keep going. Put it in, you know, do the ultrasound and cleaner. Let it break that up some. Then go back and try again and see if you can get some, uh, get some flow coming out of there just by barely pressing that plunger. Um, and if you get resistance again, put it back in there again and let it ultrasonic uh, clean for another 180 seconds, all right? So these are the methods that I had to go through when mine, I tried to press that plunger and it would not move. And I was so upset because I just knew I had wrecked my printer. Uh, but like I said, I put it in an ultrasonic cleaner for two cycles and it started coming out. Um, so I just thought I'd share that with you guys. I can't remember what group it was that I saw that in, but God bless whoever it was that I did see mention that because I was upset. So I hope you guys enjoy. If you're doing DTF, I promise that might be a little bit stressful, but it is worth it. <laughs> it's worth it. It's a lot less headache uh, when it comes to printing in shirts with all the colors and the variety that you can print on any kind of a shirt whether it's cotton or vinyl, any color, whether it's a black shirt, white shirt, pink shirt, red, it doesn't matter. Your DTF will serve you really well and give you some really beautiful prints for days to come. Here is an example of one that I did recently of a Jeep. And uh, this is for a family member that we're going to put on a shirt for her. So, but at any rate, you guys take care, enjoy your DTF, and until the next time we see you all, we hope you have happy direct-to-film printing. <laughs>